Hi there and welcome to my art channel. If you're new, my name is Rompi and if you've already been here, hi! Great to have you back! I hope these videos have not been um, kind of tedious as it's been a very long series compared to what I've done before. And if you are new and wondering what the hell I'm talking about, this video is part of a series of videos that I'm making where I am uh, showing a project, a personal project that I'm doing. It is a collection of portraits of different characters that are um, animals, of course, but depicted as aristocrats. And I've done several before. This is the Komodo Prince the Komodo Dragon Prince, and we're going to be finishing this guy up. So, as I've mentioned, this is a very large project, and we've been do doing a lot, and hopefully it's going to be done very soon. I'm very excited. We only have a few more to go. So, finishing up the Komodo Prince, uh, what you saw so far was me uh, trying to develop a uh, palette. Uh, mostly, the inspiration for the palette are old references old photos, old portraits of 18th century princes because this particular character is depicted as a 18th century prince. Of course I'm not a historical genius or expert of any kind and my knowledge is quite limited but what I could gather this is approximately what the current fashion was at the time and how uh, princes would address and, of course, using the references, it was pretty easy to figure out what colors to use. And it was really interesting to research what kind of fashion was, you know, uh, in trend at the time. And it seems like there was a lot of gold, a lot of greens, a lot of blues. And I thought blue would be a perfect choice as, you know, he's a prince and blue is a royal color and considered a royal color at the time and throughout history blues and I think purples as well were considered like color of royalty so I thought it, this particular color with the gold would be a perfect combo for our dragon prince because he is a very elegant little creature. I know he doesn't look I like it but he's quite the gentleman. And now when we have all of those colors basically working for us and we've kind of develop mostly the shape of it, it's time to work in the details and to try to figure out how to depict the form of our character without going overboard and making him look realistic enough to be believable without it going too into realism. Because this is basically meant for animation in some form and you know, in animation, realism doesn't really work. It's not the proper um, way to, you know, depict what you're trying to show. So I wanted it to be as much real as I could with, and still make it look like it's animated. And in the end, I was very happy with it. Once I'm done with the values, it's time to get more color in there. And currently, you're seeing me um, trying to put like a little golden detail, like, you know, those little buttons that you see on these types of jackets. So I basically did one, made it, and then just copy-pasted it. And you know what? God bless copy-paste, because without that stuff, <laughs> this would have lasted so much longer. So copy-paste is a blessing if used correctly, of course. Once those were done, it's time to put in a little bit more value and basically cleaning up everything that's looking nasty on it. When I was done with that, I was putting in more shadow work to make it um, pop, right? Make it look better. And when the shadowing was done, I was focusing more on lighting. Lighting is <laughs> it can be such a hassle, but um, it can be really fun as well. So once the Komodo Dragon was done, it was time to focus on the frames that we're going to be putting in these portraits. And uh, because the frames usually that are used in these kind of portraits are very detailed, um, I did want it, to, want it to go crazy, but I decided that, you know, my sanity is probably worth more and I probably shouldn't go overboard. 
The whole illustration in itself is very detailed and very complex, so going overboard with details on the frames would probably be a bad idea. So in order to spare some time, spare some my sanity, and make sure my arm doesn't fall off, I decided to simplify as much as I could, making them still look fancy and really top-notch, but also not going overboard with the details. Once again, copy-paste is my best friend here, as I made the major shape of the detailing on the frame and just copy-pasted it across the rest of the frame. And then just, you know, here and there, a few little details, and bam, we've got ourselves a frame. Since the first two frames were quite um, warm-toned, I decided that the third frame should be probably a more cooler color, so here we're going silver. A silvery um, frame for our third character. At this third frame, when I, while I was painting, I was thinking like, oh, this is gonna look great when we put it onto the illustration itself, and then it hit me. I probably should have tested the size of the frames needed for the illustration and how they're gonna fit into that space before I actually design them. Oops. Well, kitties, learn from me and remember, always test everything out before you actually do it. The more you prep, the better it'll become. And yeah, you won't have many panics, panic attacks during your project when you realize, dang it, this might not work. But, you know, it was a gamble and now I'm just gonna suck it up and do my best paint these and if nothing else, if and it doesn't fit on the illustration, I will most likely either heavily edit these existing frames or create new ones. But we'll see that later on. For now I'm just going to paint the ones that I already have, the designs, and um, hope and pray to the old gods and Mu that they will fit and that they will work great. Probably also should have decided which frame is going to be for which character, but uh, I'm not a smart person apparently. C'est la vie. If, not if nothing, we've learned a major lesson through this project that preparation is key. And when you say preparation, that means prepping every single part of it. But we're only human and this is how we learn. So next time I'll probably be a little bit smarter. Okay, finishing up the third frame. Um, I've been trying to figure out what to talk about during this part, so sorry if the commentary is a little bit annoying, because I'm, again, figuring out and just having a personal epiphany that I probably should have practiced much better. Oh well. With the third frame done, I think it's about time we figure out how the overall uh, frames are going to work on the um, illustration that's going to present the portraits. So, as I've talked before, it is going to be an illustration of a hallway that has these portraits uh, up on the wall and we're gonna have this cute little character, this little student, just uh, walking by unnoticing all of the portraits and the history they depict and he's just gonna be on his phone just passing by. So now that um, it's a pretty simple concept and I did try to make thumbnails beforehand and uh, I figured out approximately how I wanted it to look like and I'm just going to put it all together. This is not how I usually uh, approach illustrations, but 
this particular project has always been a little bit um, different than what I usually do. So uh, I'm still trying to figure out how my workflow would be the best, but here I'm just going to put these three frames that we already have done and I'm going to slap in uh, the characters that we have done so far. Of course there's going to be still a lot of things to do, but that's approximately it what we're hoping to achieve. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for joining me on this journey and on this project. To all my patrons, I love you guys and thank you for supporting my art and this channel. And if you too would like to get monthly goodies from me, check out patreon.com slash Until next time, much love.